Hey everybody, Tracking Pat here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the digital readout mode in the Prototrack RLX. We're making this video basically out of necessity because the applications reps like myself will come in and teach someone how to use the entire product. And we generally start with the digital readout mode, setting your zeros and doing things like that. And by the time they go through the process of learning how to program, change programs, add tooling, set up tooling, and everything else through the process, at the end of the day, they forget the very first part they learned. So this is kind of a refresher course for the applications reps to also help the customers and I think it'll help you too. So what do you say we get started? We're gonna go to the DRO mode. We do have a jumper on the door so that we can run this with the door guard open, which normally would not work that way. And also I wanna remind you that um, when you're running a machine like this, you should have your safety glasses on. I just have on regular glasses because I'm not really gonna be cutting anything. So I have a code put into the machine that allows me to run it even though the spindle won't be turning. Normally that wouldn't work. So let's get started. We're here in the DRO mode and we wanna just talk about how everything works in here first of all. So the first thing I wanna cover is how to set your zeros, right? So I'd go in with a tool, cut the material, back off, measure the size I just cut, and then I would select the diameter and tell it what size it is that I just cut, okay? So like in this case, I'm gonna put in the same number, the minus 1.778 hit the absolute button and that would set where my diameter is. The same thing would be true if I touched the end of the part and I said this is now Z0. That's how I set my zeros, okay? The next thing I wanna talk about is you do have a second set of numbers which are your incremental numbers. So if I touch those two buttons where it says absolute, now I got a different set of numbers that I can move away. So like for instance here, I'm gonna move the machine a little bit and then you'll see that it's moved here in the Z axis. I can come in here and say zero out the Z incrementally and when I move back to absolutes, it still knows how far away from my part zero I have moved. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about are my feed and speed wheels. So they both work the same way, so I'll just kind of explain it on the spindle RPM. But you'll notice in here that I can program in RPM or in surface footage. Whichever one's highlighted is the one that I'm using, okay? And if I wanna change RPM or something, I would simply touch that box, plug in a different RPM rate, and then when I hit the absolute key, it will change to that rate, and that's what it'll run at. I'm gonna change this back to 250, just to keep it quieter if I do have to turn the spindle on, but I believe I won't have to for this process. Also, once I set a feed or a speed, on the outside of the wheel, I have different percentages that I can speed up or slow down my original setting. So for instance, I can go to 50%, or a better showing would be that I can go to 125%, because 250 is as slow as it can go. I can also change it by 1% at a time. So while I'm running the machine, if I'm trying to dial it in for the perfect cut, I can move it up or down 1% at a time and it will adjust accordingly. The last way that I can adjust is by touching the wheel and the farther I bring my finger out, when I rotate my finger, it dials the wheel to change it on the fly until it sounds just right. If I need to go back to the original, just touch 100% and it'll be back to the norm. The feed rate works the same way you have your inches per minute on the left hand side and you can also change it to showing you thousands per revolution but that only happens when it's in the run mode. Okay, so now that you know the basic parts of that, now we're gonna talk about some of the functions that are in the DRO mode. So the first one is power feed. Power feed is the ability to move any axis under power to a certain distance, right? So it is a incremental function. In other words, it doesn't matter where it's sitting, it's wherever the tool bit is and where you want to move it from that point. So for instance, I could change the feed rate I want to run it at, let's say at 20 inches a minute. I could set my RPM for what I want to run at. And then in here, when I hit power feed, it says, what do you want to move? I want to move the Z axis. I want to go negative one inch. And when I push the incremental set key, you'll see that value show up in here. And when I push the go button, it's going to feed one inch from where it's sitting and stop when it gets to that dimension, okay? So keep in mind it's incremental, which means if I put that number and I push this button 100 times, it's still not gonna work until I realize it's incremental setting, okay? The next thing we're gonna talk about is go to. Go to is just an electronic stop that I can put a value in here and it'll stop every time it gets to that number. So for instance, if I say I wanna put the Z axis at two inches, manually when I'm using the machine, what's gonna happen is I can dial until I get to a number and it will stop, right? So see that how it moves 
and it stops at 0, 4, 4, Z. If I go this way, I can go forever. But if I go this way, it will stop each time I get to that number, okay? All right, so that is how power feed works. So the next thing I'm gonna do is push return, and I'm gonna talk about go to. Go to is an electronic stop that I can set either to the X and Z, and when I get into there, whichever one I choose and what distance I put in here, it'll automatically stop when I turn the hand wheels because they're electronic. So for instance, if I put the Z axis at one inch absolute, when I dial the hand wheel and I get to one inch, it'll disconnect the hand wheel so that it will not go beyond that boundary. See that? I can go this way forever, but each time I hit one inch, it's gonna stop. If I push return, I can now go beyond one inch. If I come back, it will remember that number and now it will stop from the opposite direction. This works the same way in both the X or the Z and also whether you use the jog stick or the electronic hand wheels. The next thing we're gonna talk about is return home. And return home position is set from your setup mode under references and you'll see that it's set at three and three. So I can change that number or just keep it. In this case, from the DRO mode, I'm gonna keep it. So when I push return home, when it says ready and push go, and I push go, it's going to move to three and three. Okay, so that's just your home position where I can rotate or change tools. Next thing I wanna talk about is the do one function. Now remember, I have the spindle where it's not running. But in the do one functions, I have the ability to cut tapers, radii, or fillets. And what this is for is on your manual lathe, you have a compound that you would set to cut angles or you'd make special tooling to cut radius. In this case, you can do it all from the manual mode in the machine. So I'm just gonna move this thing over a little closer to the part so it makes a little bit more sense when you see it. I'm gonna change over here to the course feed. And let's say I wanted to cut a 45 degree taper. I would select taper, I would set 45 or any other number, push my absolute key, and as you can see on the tool bit, as I turn the hand wheel, it moves at a 45 degree angle. Now what's important to understand is when I go backwards, when it gets to the number I started at, it also disconnects the hand wheel so it won't gouge something that I cut previously before I use this. Now the same thing is true if I wanted to cut a radius. I'm gonna put a very large one in here so you can see it happen. I'm gonna say I wanna do a one inch radius. And as I turn the hand wheel, it's gonna cut 90 degrees of radius from start to finish. And it's gonna disconnect the hand wheel on both sides. Now just so you know, I can do that either with the fine or the coarse feed. And if I use the fine feed, I would be using the x-axis hand wheel. And if I use the fast speed or the coarse speed, I would be using the z-axis hand wheel. Last but not least, you have fillet, which is the exact same thing, only inside out, right? So it's an inside radius. Again, it does 90 degrees, disconnects at both sides. And I can do that at any value. The last thing that's in here, I'm not going to show you, but I do want you to watch the video that I've already made, and it's thread repair. So if I have a part that was previously threaded and then been taken out of the machine or came back after repair, something like that, and I had to re-thread it, Thread Repair will walk you through how to set up the machine to know where that previous, th previous thread was cut, and then it'll come in and recut it. Please watch the video, it'll explain how the whole thing works, okay? The last thing that are in here is, of course, I can turn the turret automatically if I have a turret on the machine like this one does. And here I would select which tool I'm going to use and I would go by the tool table itself and tell it, in this case, my tools 101 through 105 because in the manual mode, it only knows right now that it's looking at 105. Okay, so that gives you the basics of how the DRO mode works. It's actually quite simple but it's just a refresher course and gives you an idea again on how to do the things that are in there and manually set up your parts. So as you can tell, there's a lot of neat things that you can do just in the manual part of this control itself. Hopefully what you've learned here will be beneficial to you. It'll remind you some of the things you learned originally and you'll be able to use them again as part of your day-to-day -day operations. Thank you much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. As always, keep on tracking. more energy after I eat lunch. Yes. No, sir.